All right, in this video, I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to use a LADIC trigger to MIDI module to sequence the Volcus sample. So, uh, quick disclaimer, um, if you wanna do this, the easiest way to do it is to get the LADIC module called the M216. That one will work directly with the Volcus sample without having to use any other third-party hardware. Um, I'm using the LADIC M215, and that means that I have to use a couple other things to get this to work. The reason for this is uh, it has to do with the Korg's MIDI implementation. Anybody who has a Volca sample probably knows that the Volca sample has kind of a weird MIDI implementation where each of these samples um, corresponds, instead of all being on one channel with just the different MIDI notes, each one is its own channel. Um, and that would be great if that meant you could play them polyphonically, but you can't. So it's the worst of both worlds. Um, and luckily some people have created some third party options for sequencing the Volca sample. One of which um, uh, is the RetroKits RK002 MIDI cable, which is what I'm using here. And that lets you plug um, a MIDI sequencer or a keyboard um, that sends notes from a single channel. Um, into the Volca sample, and then it distributes those notes to the corresponding channels that the Volca sample requires. So that's great. Um, the problem with that, though, for my purposes, is that the RetroKits cable requires uh, MIDI bus power, so it needs to get power from the MIDI source, and the LADIC M215 does not supply that power. So if you want to do this, um, LADIC's awesome, and He's made a uh, module, the M216, that you don't even need the RetroKits cable. It goes just directly into the Volca and it'll work perfectly. So you could get that. I have the M215 because I'm also interested in sequencing other devices besides the Volca sample. So I have to use a powered MIDI through box and then the RetroKits cable and then get to the Volca sample. So it's a little bit more convoluted, but it works. But I just wanted to explain that so people didn't see this video and go, ah, I can get an M215 and it'll work perfectly. And then get it and then be like, fuck Floor, he lied to me. I'm not lying to you. I promise it works. But the M216 is easier. All right, so with all that bullshit out of the way, let's get into some patching. Um, the basic principle of this module is you send modular level gates or triggers into these inputs and then it spits out a MIDI note. So the easiest example would be this four on the floor kick, which is coming from my master clock, which is this Polyvox modulator, LFO, square wave. And that is also feeding my 4MS QCD quad clock distributor. So then I can do some more interesting things like Take another channel, which is being multiplied and divided by a sample and hold from the Polyvox modulator. Get some kind of glitchy ratcheting effects. And then take that same um, sped up and slowed down clock and feed that into uh, Mutable Instruments Peaks. And uh, I'm using the probability gate on Peaks. So I have it set to around 30% probability that an incoming trigger will be fed to the output. So this way we'll get some triggers that are related to that random burst, but it's not gonna play every time. And then I'll take this random gate from the Qubit Nano Rand. All right, so there we've got some random morphing drums, which you could never sequence on the Volca sample. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is bring in a more melodic sample. Well, a pitched sound. And for this, I can just use the 
built-in Volca's sequencer, which we're not currently using at all. And uh, what's great about the Volca, all the Volca lines, is that they have the sync in and out, which can interface with analog gear. So I've just got the same master clock controlling the Volca. I could do it the other way around and take that sync out and use the Volca's master clock, but I think this is a bit more flexible. So if I hit, hit play, that's gonna trigger in time with all the drums. And then now I can motion sequence it. And then um, I've got that panned hard left and the drums are all panned hard right. So I can process this sample separately. So I'm gonna put some reverb on it. And now since my drums are completely independent of the Volca sequencer, I can multiply and divide that sync pulse and change the rate of the sample. And one problem with the motion recording is that it does record incoming notes. So I gotta go and clear all the parts that I don't want to be sequenced. And now I can mess with that clock and it won't affect the drums.
Yeah, so that's some of the fun you can have with this. Um, I'm definitely going to be using the Volca a lot more now that I can sequence it externally and I'm not stuck in just one bar loops. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments or you want me to do any more follow-up videos showing more of what you can do with a module like the LADIC M215 and M216, uh, please just let me know in the comments and I'll try to um, answer your questions as best as I can. So thanks so much for watching and listening and please like and subscribe if you want to hear and see more.